said I don't recommend burning things indoors. <laughs> uh, me neither. Okay. I feel like there was just, because there was like 40 comments, and I just felt like, you know, I somehow missed a bunch of them. And as I'm scrolling, it keeps it keeps jumping around. So, uh, yeah, when it's time to cut something off or when it's time to fight harder. Um, yeah, uh, I know what you're saying. I, I think everybody on here probably can relate to that. You know what I mean? You really need answers from God. Like you really need to, you really need God to give you an answer. I don't know if you can hear from him. I don't know if you have you know, dreams or visions or any of those things given to you by God, but, um, you know, also what's the, what's the fruit of each thing, right? So if you cut somebody off, sure, it's going to hurt and it's going to be hard in the moment. Well, what's going to be the, the long lasting fruit of that if you do, right? And then if you fight harder uh, for the situation, I mean, what's, what's going to be the fruit of that? Like, what's going to, what's going to come of that? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the enemy will use scripture to cause us to fight harder for people that God doesn't want us to fight harder for, right? Because sometimes it's the, it's the separation. It, it almost comes like a rebuke. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people don't wake up and, and even come to Christ unless there's severe brokenness, severe hurt, right? Most people come to God for two reasons, um, either because of pain or because of love. And a lot of times for many of us, we know that it's it's came out of pain and the hardships of life and things that have happened. So, um, about all the, but now to ask, what if we... Um, as far as your marriage goes, I see what you're talking about. Um, uh, and you guys have a baby, um, you, you know, hopefully you can hear from God. You're saying that the Lord showed you some other things, right? And you've seen his demons go when you were, uh, going into the bedroom and then you had a dream about it. I would go before God, uh, earnestly. And this is the thing when it comes to these hard situations and even the person I was just talking to about not knowing what to do. Okay. The way that to get your answer from God, and I'm not talking about in a manipulative, manipulative type of way, right? Because we can't manipulate God. But in a way to honestly get an answer from God is, one, you have to make sure that you're not in any sin yourself, right? You're not lusting after other, both of you are females, right? So you're not lusting after other men or, you know, um, cussing, drinking, doing anything, cheating or doing any of that stuff, right? You have to make sure that you're at a place of purity the best that you can. Okay, uh, repent to God for any sins, any previous sins. And then you need to go to God with an earnest and open heart and ask him whatever he wants you're willing to do. If you go to him with, you know, that heart posture that says, I really want this to work out, right? Then how are you going to be able to hear God tell you that that's not what he has for you if you go with the heart posture like i just want to get out of this i don't even want to be here anymore then how will you get revelation from god if he wants you to stay and then he wants to give you the blueprint or the map of how to war against these things like how are you going to hear those things you just have to go to god earnestly with an open heart that says lord i want whatever it is that you want you know the end from the beginning right please just show me okay and as long as you're not messing around with the devil then you can guarantee that most of what you're going to receive is going to come to you from God. It's going to be pure. You get what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about like, oh, I cussed him out yesterday. So now maybe the devil was the one that came and gave me some demonic dream about leaving him. You get what I'm saying? You have to make sure that you're, that you're repentant and you have to make sure that you're, you're, you're operating from a pure place. And so that way God can give you you know, you can trust that the answers and the things that you're receiving are really of the Lord and not the enemy's interference.
Yeah, she's she's truthful. She says she had a dream about the letters coming out before um, she knew I was writing them. She did send that to me um, in Messenger on Facebook. And like I said, I document everything. So I have all I have all of that documented where she said that and she. Um, yeah, she knew. Yeah, she knew. She didn't know like the details of stuff, but she knew uh, pretty much what the letters were were pertaining to. And I did screenshot that. And again, there might be some time where I release some of this stuff, but I. I it's just. I, I, I would want to do it first so people can understand how the Lord works. But at the same time, like I don't have a desire to be like, oh, this is how God works in my life. Right. And just put it out, just showing people like I just don't have any type of desire for any of that stuff. So um, I do have some stuff, you know, I do have some stuff created that kind of go along the lines of like my color schemes, the stuff that the Lord gave me for the ministry. Right. And I just like to create like that's what stuff I do for a living anyway. And so I just like to do that. But you see that some sometimes I'm not even on social media like all day, two days, sometimes for a week. There's been times I was off for three months, you know, like I'm not on here trying to build a platform and trying to build like my own kingdom and stuff like that. But um, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of people are afraid to speak up. Well, and there's a lot of dece the, the witchcraft works like I was talking about that emotionalism and sensationalism. It works just like with this deceptive witchcraft. Right. And just like people get people. Words are spells are words. Right. That's where we get the word spelling and the spelling of a word. Right. So words are used as spells. So when you use words that are emotional, that bring about emotionalism and sensationalism, it's a form of charismatic witchcraft. And it puts this spell over people and all these people who follow and idolize these people. Right. And they they can't discern the difference of what's going on. This is just like what I was telling those girls about going to God with an open heart and not making your mind up one way or another. That way you can hear truthfully from the Lord and what he wants. And see, that's what happens when that charismatic witchcraft comes upon people. They can't they're not able to discern what's true and what's uh, false because they don't allow the spirit of the Lord can't work in there when that witchcraft is already in place. Right. So it's like that witchcraft has to be removed to where you say, I don't know if this person's true and I don't know if this person's false. But Lord, I'm will, like, show me that, you know, show me the truth. Show me what's really going on. But when you that witchcraft has already worked and you're like, oh, man, they they got a ministry and they they say all of these words and they're talking about atmospheres and they're talking about prophetic and they use Jesus name and they're casting out demons and doing all this other stuff, right? It's, 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 it becomes like this form of mesmerization and charismatic witchcraft is rooted in that. It's rooted in flattery. It's rooted in vain words. It's rooted, it's rooted in like that, that puffery, right? Words used to puff people up emotionally and things, right? It's like me saying, you know, all of you are, are, are called to, you know, be mantled for this and mantled for that. And I'm just using these words to speak to all of you, to, to flatter all of you. You get what I'm saying? And that's how it is. That's, it works the same way in their posts. It works the same way in their videos, their shorts, all the stuff that they do. It's, it's charismatic witchcraft. And they write books on it and they're the ones doing it. Rehashing the same old lies from history. Yeah, that's truthful. They repackage it. That's what I was saying earlier. You know, they, they take a, a knowledge that was in books about deliverance, about demons, about whatever, right? That they're going to write a book about. They take information from people who came before them and they write their own books to sell them to you. And then now this era, this, this, this time frame of people think that they are the ones that are the leaders, but really, they're just taking information from people. They didn't. They never sat in the secret place for any of this stuff. And you can tell that by the way they teach and the things that they talk about. They all sound just one like another. And all of these men that come out in this movie, if you ever look at their YouTubes, you will see one of them will post about this particular topic this day. Three days later, the next person's posting about the same topic. Three days later, the next person's posting about the same topic. The next person got a video out. YouTube after YouTube after YouTube about the same topic, about the same stuff, just over and over and over. 
The Lord, the spirit of the Lord is not telling them inside their soul to create these things and to do these things. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're just doing it. They're doing it on their own accord because they their desires in their soul is for something other than uh, God, truly the spirit of the Lord. Yeah, I mean, I hear you. I'm bold when I, I know God's given me something too. Um, yeah, that person's name, that person's name that you mentioned, um, he's he's the one that I mentioned uh, about the Lord had took me in in a vision. I, I didn't ask or wasn't praying about it. He just took me in a vision uh, into his study, and I was watching him take information from all of these other books that he had laid out and um was rewriting it and making ebooks and courses and doing all the stuff that he he sells to everybody online and um he he is the person that has the spiritual son that i was mentioning that uh, uh has been in the hospital twice and he's also the person that i uh the lord had me um uh, give him a judgment about uh repenting or that uh death and destruction was going to come upon his house and upon his his bloodline and everything and um like within maybe like a year from that time he he lost his father like i don't wish you know anything bad upon people this per this spiritual son of his has been in the hospital twice and each time i told him or rebuked him told him that he needed to repent like of what's actually going on that he's in a camp with this group of people and he's been mesmerized right mesmerized by the false prophetic and the false the false ministry and stuff and he's been led to believe that he's a prophet but he's like there's you're not you can tell when the when he speaks that there's nothing revelatory there's nothing the, the fruits of what an actual office of a prophet has is not him okay it doesn't it's never in all the years that i've known about him it's never poured forth out of him it's just a it's this man-made ordination of people telling people they're prophets and apostles and they don't, they don't actually carry that and then but then the people get it in their minds and they're conscious that that's who they actually are and so they start talking the lingo the lingo right they start they start talking it right but you're not seeing any of this stuff happen like you're not seeing any of the spiritual fruit coming forth off of any of it okay it's just all it's just all deception it's all puffery it's all making the next real and the next video right and chasing the algorithm yeah he's he's a part of them too Thanks. um okay so let me let me let me scroll up then from i guess Right. It doesn't seem to align. Right. When you have the spirit of the Lord, like you, you know, you're hearing and you're picking up on things that that just. Um, that doesn't relate to your it doesn't relate to your spirit. And, um, you know, here's the thing about here's the thing, too, about prophets. And like I mentioned some of this earlier. OK. Um, yeah, specifically assigned and sent out by those groups and movements. That's true. Yeah. And you see a lot of that in like in the Pentecostal movement as well. Um, here's the here's the thing about people who are prophets, right? So if you look at these people and they've been a prophet for five years, 10 years, whatever, and you see them calling themselves a prophet, but you've never heard them call out anything in the body of Christ. Like, sure, anybody can say the words just like witchcraft and talk about the world and how the music industry does this and they're evil and they do demonic stuff, right? But have you ever seen any of these people that claim to be prophets, have you ever seen any of them call out anybody specifically in the body of Christ? Have you ever seen them specifically even call out like higher ranking leaderships personally to the to their face or even online or anything. You have never seen them do any of that. Every single prophet in the Bible practically was called to rebuke P 
people, rebuke the body of Christ, okay? These people aren't doing any of that. Why? Because they don't want to offend any of you because they want your likes, your follows, your shares, your money. That is, their, their, their soul is set on these things, on these worldly things. The world has never been taken out of them. They've never been delivered from the world. They've never died to themselves, okay? Many of them are false converts, and somebody told them they could speak well, right? And so they thought they should be a pastor, so then they start you know, preaching and teaching. And then next thing you know, they're all of a sudden a prophet and an apostle and all this other stuff. And it's like, the Lord didn't do any of that. If they're really called to be that, the, the spirit of the Lord would be in everything that they do, it would be in everything that they do. And it's not this, this stuff is just, it's all done off of their, from a, uh, from another spirit. And in that these spirits manipulate the desires that are within them. Okay, if you were on the last live and I talked about the difference between the spirit, man, the soul, and the physical body. They're in different dimensions. Okay, when the soul desires things of this world that the Lord tells us not to, whether it's the money, the attention, the fame, and all of those things are in Christianity. It's a worldly Christianity. They desire that. They desire all those things and they hide it behind the name of Jesus Christ. They hide it behind God. But it's it's not being deceived or it's not uh, it's working for a lot of people, but it's not going to work for the remnant. Okay, let's see. Yeah, can't come into agreement. Yeah, with unspoken prayers. Yeah, I I I don't. I definitely don't do any of that. I definitely don't ask. There's like specific people that I would ask to pray for me, but but that's it. So, um, wow. Right. Um, you, she said that I had bad experience at the point where I don't know what's real anymore. Um, so I talked a lot about, uh, just like in my posts and different things about completely dying to ourselves. Right. Yeah. And, and only, o only the, only the devil and only the devil's ministers will offer you a crown without, without the cross, without dying at the cross, without being willing to give up your whole entire life and everything in your entire life for God whether it's your own desires, whether it's dreams, whether it's things that you know that he has given you to do, you still have to lay those things down at some point in time. It doesn't mean that they'll go away, but you have to be willing to allow God to take them away, right? And so what happens is, is like I mentioned, these a lot of these people operate out of the spirit of religion, okay? That spirit of religion operates in the prophetic and does all this stuff, and it keeps people going and going and going, have to produce content, have to do this, social media, social media videos, do all this stuff, right? And it's this spirit of religion. When you come out of the spirit of religion, and I need a few people who understand this to confirm. Some of you I've counseled with, so I know for a fact. When you come out of the spirit of religion, you will feel confused, okay? At this moment is when the enemy will say, well, that's not of God. I, you feel confused. God is not the author of confusion. And the enemy will speak that scripture to you to make you believe that what you're going through is, is not of God, so you shouldn't do it, right? So you could back up into the church you're in, back up into the ministry, back up into whatever it is God's telling you to do that might be painful, that might be hurtful, that might be, you might not have all the answers to, right? But that spirit of religion creates a mindset upon people where they can have the world and they can have Jesus, right? That they, they, can have the, they can have all of these things and hold all of these things in their hands and somehow still receive this crown and not have to die to themselves for anything, okay? But when you come out of that spirit of religion, it will have such a grip on your mind that you will feel confused when you come out from that. Okay, this is another thing that, but you have to keep pushing and you have to keep going when you come out from these false churches, from this lukewarm stuff, from this false prophetic stuff that's going on. You will feel like, wow, I thought I knew God. I thought I was born again. I thought there was a time I thought I was born again because I, I, 
repeated the sinner's prayer and got baptized and I thought I was born again. It wasn't until I was actually born again when I was repentant, when I called out to God in repentance that I actually became born again. Okay? But it will feel confusing to you because you will think, wow, I knew what this scripture meant. I knew what that scripture meant. I knew like all this stuff, right? Because you've been taught these things, whether you've been in church or you've been taught by parents or whatever the case may be. So you, you're taught these things underneath the spirit of religion is like a form of witchcraft. When you come out from, from that, you, God is separating your soul from that. So it starts to be confusing and you start to be like, wow, I guess I don't know God. Right. Like, I guess I don't know the spiritual things that I thought that I knew because you start to realize that everything that you were involved in is deception. <laughs> it's, it's deception. It's a false church. Right. And so you will have that. There will be the that that confusion that happens there. But it's not because you're going in the wrong direction. It's because the Lord is trying to pull you away from all of that. Right. To free your mind from those things. And in that process, there, there will you will feel confused. OK. And another thing about confusion and this, you, you need to uh, understand this for anything in life in general. OK, because the enemy will deceive you highly because the moment you feel confused or you feel unsure about something, you think that you're not supposed to continue going in that direction because the enemy's job is to bring the confusion anywhere you have the truth of God of whether it's scripture or whether he's wanting you to do something or whether he's not wanting you to do something whatever it is it's the truth of god okay whether it's to do something to not do something the truth of god is here the enemy will always bring up the opposite wherever you have these two come together will always be confusion there will always be some form of confusion that the enemy puts there to take place there he's not just going to stand back freely and let you go on the path that god has for you you get what i'm saying so if the Lord is asking you to do something, you can almost guarantee that the enemy is going to tr try to come with some kind of confusion to bring confusion to you, to either to get you to not do it or either to get you to go the other direction. There's a lot of things that God's called people to do that they don't do because as soon as they go to do it, the enemy brings confusion. He'll bring something right around and it'll start to bring, be, con be confusing. And then he'll whisper the same scripture to you and say, God is not the author of confusion. I must not supposed to go down this path. I must, I guess I'm not supposed to do this. I guess I'm not supposed to take this job or I guess I'm not supposed to quit this job, right? I mean, this is 2023 and the Bible still says, sell everything that you have and come and follow me. This is 2023 and how many people do you know in this world have sold everything they have and come and follow God? Who's gonna do that? Who's gonna listen to the voice of God and actually do that? If he calls you to sell everything, take that money, go to another country and start some kind of mission. Who's going to do that? Who's going to do that? Right. You know how much confusion that the enemy is going to try to bring to that? You know how much doubt and worry and fear he's going to try to do his job. He's going to try to do his job. Right. Double mind is double mindedness. He comes in to bring the, the double mind. She said, she said, I will. Right. But you get what I'm saying? Like, it's not easy for people to follow the things of God. Personally, I feel like it was probably easier for people back in the day to follow the things of God. That's why you had more purity in marriages and stuff like that. Right. Even with like a lot of our grandparents, even let's just say we just go back through the generations, even like a hundred years ago or so, right? There was still more like purity in everything that happened. Why? Because we didn't have all of this other foolishness occupying our life, right? Like social medias and all this stuff that we chase is vanity in this world. Like all of the material stuff is vanity. Sure, we all like to have some nice things and I'm no different from anybody else, but the reality of it is it's all vanity. And if the Lord asks you to give it all away tomorrow, you need to have that separation from that to where you can do that. Right. Because then if not, you spend a bunch of time being in disobedience to God. Right. If he can get you to to doubt that path or doubt what you're supposed to do, he'll he'll steal it right from you. The Lord has many great things for people and they, you know, they get stolen from them because people don't know what the 
path looks like. We we come to this place to call ourselves Christians, but we want to have our hand on everything. We want to be able to control everything. So we we call it the things of God as long as we can have control over it. Right? If we can't have control of it, then all of a sudden this the enemy's doing, right? If we can't have control over it, we don't know what it's gonna look like tomorrow or a week from now. Well, that's not God wanting me to do that because God would give me peace in the situation. God would give me peace in the situation, right? You're supposed to have peace in every situation, regardless. It's not about whether you have peace going on the this path that you know you don't know the outcome or the answers to that. When, when if a, if God asks a person to quit their job, they it, and you don't you don't have a lot of money in your bank account, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. And if the enemy can swindle that, you'll stay at a job and stay in a place where God has told you to quit years ago. And then if the enemy's really slick enough, he'll 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 bring around a promotion in that job to keep you there even longer. God wanted you to quit the job, sell everything you have, and it looks scary because you would end up with nothing. But the enemy comes around and brings you a promotion of twice the amount of money. And you over here calling the promotion a blessing from God when really it's a blessing from the enemy. Right. Store up your treasures in heaven. I'm not saying God doesn't blessed financially and that sort of thing. But if your heart has never been crucified to, to money and you still seek the things of this world, I'm telling you, most of the blessings that's probably coming to you is from the enemy. Most of the open doors, you know, and for some people that are really called by God, the Lord will not allow, even when the enemy tries to open up doors of blessings, the Lord will close those doors because the Lord knows if you get that blessing or if you get that money or you get that promotion, you get that job, the Lord knows it'll take you off in another direction and he can't allow for that to happen. Right. I see. She said, I've kind of, I felt like a judgmental person going into all these churches and seeing, right. I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I think a lot of people have probably went through that because when the Lord starts to change you uh, spiritually, he starts to open up your eyes spiritually and you start to see how most of this stuff is false out here that's in Christianity. You do start to kind of feel like a judgmental person, right? Like, and I, I dealt with this in when God started having me rebuke and correct people, right? And I knew that if I was to say something to this particular person in my life, I'm like, Lord, if I say something, uh, they're never going to want to talk to me again. Right. And it didn't even have to be like mean. It would just be like the Lord revealed to me that this, this and this was happening. And he's saying, you better do this, this and this, because if not, this, this and this is going to happen. You know, and immediately people don't want to they, they're, they're like, oh, you're being judgmental and you got sin in your past or whatever they might say. Right. And then people don't want to talk to you or communicate with you or have anything to do with you. Right. So the first couple times and it and actually I'm surprised that it didn't happen sooner because I'm pretty just kind of straightforward and bold with the things I say. Um, but I'm I'm not mean in that uh, aspect. Uh, it can definitely come across as if, uh, you know, I am uh, when the Lord, you know, tends to roar through you. And I, I'm sure some of you understand that. But the first couple of times that somebody was like, well, that was mean. And I went to God in tears because I was and I was repenting. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to be mean. Right. I don't want people to see me as mean. And, and he thundered. He thundered in the heavens. He's like, did I say that to you? Did I tell you that? And I was like, no, no, you didn't. He said, do, when I send you to say something, do not let anybody ever tell you that you're mean, that you're arrogant, that you're prideful, that you're rude or any of these things. It was like he trained me up through these situations, right, to understand that he was going to speak through me in certain ways that the only thing people were going to be able to say is that you're touching God's anointing and that you're prideful and that you're rude or any of these things. And the Lord showed me that I have to know between myself and God that I don't have any of those things operating in me or in my life. Like I have to be searched and I have to know that I'm not that kind of person. All right? I have to be delivered from these things. All the things in my soul have to be healed. And when that happens, you know the Lord can work through you and he can work through you powerfully. And it doesn't matter if every single one of you on this broadcast right now started talking crazy about me, started talking crazy to me. I would just continue to keep going on as if it never even happened. You know what I mean? And like... When you're called by God to do things like you really have to take those blows and those hits and not allow them to get on the inside of you in that way. 
As long as you know who you are with God and you don't have these things operating in your life, God can speak through you in such a powerful way and it will never matter to you what people say about you. It will ne they can accuse you of all kinds of things in the world and it will never matter because you know that that's not you. You know that between you and God, that that's not who you are. And I'm not talking about an arrogant, prideful way, you know, just saying, oh, I'm not mean or I'm not this or I'm not that. But I'm talking about legitimately, humbly before God, knowing that you're not that, that kind of person, right? So religion is the spirit of witchcraft. Absolutely. Yep. Jezebel, definitely, for sure. Leviathan. We see in Revelations where, you know, it talks about Jezebel coming in preaching in the, the churches, right? So we know that that's going to happen. That's And, and not, not that Jezebel just operates with the spirit of religion, okay? But a lot of these spirits, a lot of these principalities, they're, they, they work in all of these different kingdoms, okay? They just work in different ways and in different manners pertaining to what it's, what it's for, right? I mean, obviously, like, so the educational system, right? The spirit of Jezebel is not going to work the same way in the educational system as the spirit of Jezebel works in the uh, in religion, right? Let's see. Yeah, there's no real repentance. That's that's absolutely correct. And I'm telling you, without without repentance, people can't be born again. And that's why I'm saying. You see that a lot of these, they they offer people a salvation without them ever preaching the conviction of the cross. You get what I'm saying? It's this, Jesus loves you, and he died for you, and he, 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 just, he just needs you. You know, he just needs you. And while those things have scriptural context and have accuracy to them, you see how that breeds a false religion. You see how that spirit of religion breeds false converts of people who feel like they're adored by God, but they've never seen uh, their their sin. They've never seen themselves as being wrong. A lot of these people have never even been repented for anything. And that's why you have a lot of these people who claim to be Christians, but they are so prideful. They do have that spirit of pride because the spirit of religion, what? Carries the spirit of pride with it as well. It works with that spirit. Leviathan. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see you saying that you're willing to do whatever it takes. It's hard to do something after a previous experience. That's understandable. You have to... You, you have to, uh, without knowing everything about you, the Lord has not given me specific revelation about you, but um, you, like I said, you have to be able to go before God openly, you know, with an open heart and, and, and plead with him about your situation, about everything that's going on, and he will show you. He will show you. Um, yeah, you have to come out of uh, religion and the spirit of religion to become kingdom. That's facts. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wanting to do what's right and not always doing it. Praise God about the false conversion. Yeah, it has to be by the Spirit of the Lord. I I have a whole entire without going into it too much. I do have a, a teaching on false converts, and I'm just I'm gonna do a whole like live on it. Probably it's not gonna be this long, but about false converts, it, it's back with scripture and everything else, right? And you have to be born by the by the Spirit. And so we see all these people talking about that salvation is of the Lord, which is true, right? And it's by God's hand and it's by God's doing. Right. But here's the thing. Since all of that is true, why is it that we think somehow or we're taught by the spirit of religion that we can come as sinners and tell God to come inside of us? What makes us think is we could come as these wretched people. OK. 
and we can tell God, come into my heart. We can tell God to do this and we can tell God to do that. And then we say we're born again. The, really, the thing about it is, is that the Lord has to look down upon inside the person. He determines, because that's right, salvation is, is the Lord's doing and the Lord's choosing. But salvation is always also the Lord's giving when he wants to give it, when he determines that person is to, is to receive that salvation. Do you understand what I'm getting at? It, but yet we've made it to believe that the salvation is of the Lord. But if you get baptized, you'll be saved. If you repeat the sinner's prayer, you'll be saved. We go and we do these things. And then we claim that salvation belongs to us. That's why 90% of these people are not really born again Christians. They're Christians in their minds. They're Christians. They might even love Jesus and they read scripture, go to church, do whatever. Okay. It, they do all of this stuff in the kingdom, but not truly born again. By his spirit. You have to be born again by the spirit of the Lord in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. That is scripture. Okay. These people are not born again because they 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 told God to come inside their heart. Somebody told them that's what you do. And that's how you get born again. Uh, on the, no, I don't have the teaching out on the, like the false converts. It's going to be titled false converts. And it's not, I, I didn't, I don't have it out. That was just kind of a portion of it, right? Of, of, of the truth and what it's what it's going to, basically what it's going to end up being about, right? Because that's how all these false, uh, that's how all these false conversions end up happening, you know? And like, oh, they they dedicated their life to Christ and they they got baptized. They got baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's like, man, that did not even happen. That did not even happen. We, we don't, not any one of us could go to God and tell him what to do, okay? There are some people that have the ability to negotiate with God, but we do not have the ability to go to God and tell him what to do. So when you see this other person, right, that's become kind of famous in deliverance ministry that is also in the movie that came out, numerous times you will see him on his lives and doing this stuff Holy Ghost, come now into their life. Holy Ghost, do this now. Holy Ghost, now. You, you're deceived. You're operating out of a demonic spirit, and these spirits are coming around, performing and doing different stuff on your behalf, because I'm telling you right now, nobody has the authority to tell God, the Holy Spirit, or Jesus Christ what to do now. <laughs> nobody had, like, I just, to me, sometimes I'm just like, how do other people not? you know, not understand this and not pick this up, you know, and you're telling people, the Holy Spirit, come now and give them their prayer language. And you got just people bubbling and babbling and doing all this kinds of stuff, man, that's not uh, truly the Holy Spirit. It's, I'm just like, oh my gosh, man, like, it, I feel so bad for these other people that this stuff's happening to because they're, they're being deceived. They end up being false converts. And who knows, maybe in three years, they'll be standing on a platform as a false convert, being led by other spirits, imparting other spirits into other people. You get what I'm saying? Because some false teacher originally told them that they were born again and they weren't. Jesus' first words in ministry out of his mouth, his, when he first went into public ministry, his first words was repent, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. All right. Um, is there any other questions I missed? Anybody else that's on here? So if there is a, a question and I did uh, miss it, if you would just just uh, retype that for me. Okay. Yeah, the spirit of confusion causes, uh, comes to cause doubt. It absolutely does. They wandered around the wilderness every day, waking up in the wilderness and the promised land was right there. So much doubt, so much confusion, so much double-mindedness. You know what I mean? Waking up every day in the promised land was right there. And it never had it. But yet everybody in the body of Christ, if you ask everybody in the body of Christ right now, if they're in God's will for their life, everybody's going to say yes. I'm doing God's will. I'm in God's will, whatever the case may be. And you don't even know if you're holding a, a, a promise from the enemy or a promise from God or a blessing from God or a blessing from the enemy. 
and I don't, I don't mean that to the few of you who are, are talking about, right, you don't know what to do in situations. I'm not talking about you guys. I'm just talking about the body of Christ in general, right? That a lot of people, though, they take the easy route and then they say that's the blessing of God, okay? Because it's easier, right? Because they can have their hands in it. Because they feel like they have control over it. They feel like they know what the outcome is going to be. Okay. So. All right. So I'm at the bottom. I'm scrolling through. Uh, no, you don't need to see the movie. I mean, unless you, it's, it has, it's all the people that's been, uh, you know, claiming to do deliverance and stuff like that. And so, and two of them, including the person who, who, who made the movie in general, and one of the other people, they, they both were in adultery while in ministry, uh, never repented, never stopped, um, and put away their spouse and then married the person that they're with. And while many people think that um, this is okay by God, but the Lord tells us he does not make covenants with darkness. Okay? So you can't claim that you have a godly marriage, right? A godly marriage has to be pure. It has to be holy. Okay? And when you, they, they, they instead of repenting and stopping, they, they sealed it with the demonic covenant. Okay? And if you know from the things I've been teaching about covenants, oaths, contracts, agreements, all those things, right? They literally made a covenant with darkness because they, their, their, their commitment was done in, in darkness. That makes sense. So now they're gonna, they have the spirit of adultery working in their ministry. They have the spirit of adultery that's working in their marriage. Yeah, they don't even say Holy Spirit come. Like you, you know, like what I'm saying. If we we were like Holy Holy Spirit come, we would it would be like that. We would be inviting Him in in, in like a a humble type way, right? But they're they're they do it with like this authority. Like the Holy Spirit's going to jump to what they say to do. It's just the it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I'm like I'm like how did they themselves not even know that that's that that's messed up. Yeah, including children. I know what you're getting out there. Just even so many. I have something that I know the Lord is going to have me release. I know I've been saying that for probably like a week or or two, but um, it's been it's been uh, it's going to come against her because she's out of that. She's out of the same camp where this stuff is going on. So, like I told you about that man's father dying, right? And he's he claims to be an apostle, but he's been selling the prophetic, right? Making money and doing all this other stuff, right? Selling the gospel. And he's he's not even an apostle. He don't even govern 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 atmospheres or none of this stuff happens anywhere in any of his ministry. Right. His spiritual son, okay. I've already brought this correction and rebuke to them. So things have already started happening in their life. So they can't deny that they that this stuff is actually happening to them. So they know that it's happening. But what has happened since that I have said those things those governing principalities that govern that camp, that group of people, those spirits have shifted away from those two men and now conform to the woman and is now building that woman up that's in their camp. And I know you guys get what I'm talking about. So it left them because originally those things, all of those rebukes had to do with those people, okay? The, this other rebuke hasn't came out directly towards her yet, but when it does come out, I'm telling you, you're going to watch her whole entire kingdom is going to topple. It's going to topple because when God calls certain people to warfare, they don't just they don't just like go to uh, bat against the person and just like say the name of the person. And, and all of a sudden, that's just that's just it. The person, the, the Lord reveals the strategy, how to take the foundation out from underneath it, how to go against the principalities and powers that are holding it up in general. So that's where the warfare originally starts first. You get what I'm saying? Okay.
Okay. Um, let's see. Reminds me of the entire. Yeah, the the yeah the laughing and all that stuff manically. Yeah, that's a that's a false spirit. That's a false spirit. God doesn't do that. The reason why the Bible talks about that they thought that they were drunk and these people ignorantly go on and accept another spirit is just because is because the joy and the laughter. Like I mean, you know, you guys see me talking, but like if you would really spent the day with me, like like I I joke around a lot and you know just like my personality and stuff so in they weren't <clears throat> in the bible they weren't literally toppling over and in acting like an actual drunken state you get what i mean it was just that's the communication and the wordage that was used at that time so i don't know your teachings yet um, I did put the link to the to the website, or you can follow the link that's on any of my posts, um, and go to the website and see some of the stuff there. Um, a lot of these teachings, I'm end up breaking them all down. I end up putting them on YouTube. I already have like the covers and everything already made before I actually started doing any of these teachings. So, so these videos won't be like four hours long specifically a lot of i'm going to break a lot of it down i mean i'll have this video that'll be long but then i'll also have it broken down into other things so um how do you break off ties we've had with ministries so if you go to my uh website you go to the prayer page there's a prayer there for soul ties so if you have um if you have the books like books and that sort of thing i would destroy get rid of those books um and then i would use the the warfare prayer that i have for breaking soul ties and in the those places it has where you could put either a person's name that you're praying against so you could put their name and their ministry right like you could just include it but it's it's a long it's a long prayer about soul ties and that's how you would break all soul ties off with uh with ministries and ministry leaders let's see I seen something that said about commanding angels. Yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Inviting God rather than ordering God around. When I see people doing that and just ordering the Holy Spirit around and doing all this and that, I already know that their their heart condition and their heart posture uh, when it comes to God in general, and they can think that they're super humble and super holy and all that. But when you see that stuff happening. Um, you already know that that's not the case. Um, <laughs> right. Fall just as fast as it popped up. It will, I mean, I'm, you'll know, I'm sure the Lord will have me put it on my page. It's not going to be, it, it's going to be clear. If you look back through my page, you could see that I'm, I'm clear with every one of them that I speak. That, that I that I speak to, so I I, I tag him in everything and and everything. So it, the Lord's not going to have me do something that He's not going to have me be straight straightforward about. Um. Yes. No, you don't need to be in a church when it grieves you. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being connected to a, like a true prophetic church um, because, I mean, that would be a blessing for anybody to be able to, you know, be connected to a true church like that. But um, it grieves you for a reason, right? Like uh, um, was mentioned earlier, we were talking about, about um, when you come out from the spirit of religion, right? And the Lord starts to open your spiritual eyes. It starts to change you. Uh, internally, it does start to grieve you at all the foolishness and stuff that's taken place within the churches. So the the Lord is placing that within you, that grief and that that um, that holy anger, right, of things that's taken place. Um, those those things are normal for you to feel when God starts transforming you out of that that spirit of religion. So, <laughs> is he talking about? her or her 
Well, I'm talking about one of them, but I was talking about the other one earlier before I think that you got on here. So it'll end up being to both of them. I mean, at some point in time, it's going to be soon. I don't know how soon though, but I can feel in the spirit that it'll, that it's close. And let's see. All right. So <laughs> yeah. She said, she said it was earlier and this person was now. That's true. Um, so I, I think maybe that's it. Let me scroll one more time here. This is right. Nothing is done of man. That's true. It all has to be led by the Spirit of the Lord. When it's not by the Spirit of the Lord, then it's another spirit that's working through man. And so, like I said, when you see these people saying... Holy Spirit come now and do all this other stuff. It's like, that's not, that's not. Yeah, praise God. So for those of you who don't know, we'll be, I'll come back next Saturday and I'm going to preach on, um, <laughs> preach. You guys got me talking about preachers and stuff. Um, I'm going to come back and teach. I, I don't know which kingdom he's going to have me do for sure. He'll let me know uh, soon, but I'm there's for those of you who don't know there's five domains of darkness, and so tonight we just we covered the cosmic uh, kingdom of darkness. So well, actually we covered the cosmic kingdom and the pandemonium kingdom. The pandemonium kingdom is within the cosmic kingdom. So there's three other kingdoms to cover: the marine kingdom, um, which is uh, you know the oceans and waters. Basically, it's a water kingdom. And then the Pestifarian kingdom, which is the earth, the forest, you know, the mountains, that sort of thing. And then um, the Cro-Magnon uh, kingdom, which is underneath the earth, right? So it's hell. It's also the, uh, the kingdom of the cemetery, right? Like the kingdom of the dead, basically, uh, is included in that. It's where like the Grim Reapers and that sort of thing all kind of stems from all that stuff, right? And their main operation is out of uh, black magic, operates out of that kingdom. So I think I covered all the questions. Yeah, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do the, I see you say the Marine Kingdom, I need to learn more. Uh, the Marine Kingdom I'm going to do last. So depending on the length of, depending on the length of the teaching, I mean, this is like took four hours just for like one, basically. So I, I don't know that I'm going to be able to pack like two, two of those in together. I may be able to, but the Marine King is probably going to be by itself. And I'm probably going to do that. It last. I'm probably going to do the Marine Kingdom last. So the Marine Kingdom will not be next weekend, but it would probably be the weekend after that. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I might be able to put the Pestafarian kingdom and the Cro-Magnon Kingdom together, probably, probably next weekend. So, and then once I come to the end of the teaching, I'll, I'll put out a, I'll put out a prayer that I help you guys break off any soul ties and family lines, generational stuff, uh, off of all of these kingdoms. But it'll be a prayer that is uh, just for you guys. Like it won't be a prayer that is going to teach you how to go and pray over your city or your region. Because like I said before, not everybody's called to do that. And if I was to create a prayer like that and people would go and try to do it, um, they could open up the door for heavy attacks on their life and that sort of thing. And and I definitely don't want to be responsible for that. So if God's called you to territorial warfare and that sort of thing, you could always inbox me and, you know, give me some testimony, that sort of thing. Talk to me about it. I'm, I'm willing to to talk to any of you about it if that's something that you're you know already involved in or you've been involved in or the lord's taken you different places um so i do see some of you that you know may post prayers like that i've been involved with some of you in prayer directly um i also have you know people that intercede and that sort of thing and so they they might check up on somebody for me and you know, give me information about somebody that prays for their area and that sort of thing. So I usually know and see like what's what's taking place. But um, please remain. 
for stakes that you released earlier. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, about the stakes uh, for the property. Um, I do have that. It's in the notes on my phone. So I'll, let me let me write that down. If I got room on something, that's like I mentioned before. I know a lot of you people probably write and journal, but you know, most prophetic people do. But just for the fact that you know, like, no matter whether you got a notebook or what, whatever it takes, right? You just keep writing. So. Stakes pro. Um, I'll try to. Uh, I'll just try to do it tomorrow. It'll only take a minute for me to make the post on the website, and and then what I'll do is I'll just uh, I'll post it on my I'll post it on my page. I'll post it on my my Facebook and and Instagram page, and then my ministry page. Um, Uh, yeah, um, I, I would advise you definitely to get out of that group for, yeah, facts. There's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of people that are not on here, but, uh, last year when I, if you go back maybe around September, or October, I put a rebuke out about, uh, her spiritual father, which is kind of what some of the conversation have been about. And you will see. Um, there was a lot of people that started to comment. Well, then a lot of those people flooded to my inbox and they started, you know, giving me testimonies about all the strange fire, the demonic stuff that was taking place there. Um, I have a lot of stuff and actually even somebody that you know that referred um, you to me uh, on these lives, even last year, she uh, sent me a recorded audio of, of her going off on somebody. So I have the recorded audio. Um, you know, I have recorded testimonies and documentation of all of the uh, false fire and all the demonic stuff that's that's happened within her stuff. So that's why I said when that comes out, when the Lord tells me to to put that out, it's it's going to be it's going to be a plethora of things that it's not going to be just like one thing that can be denied. Right. It's going to be all kinds of stuff and it's going to have audio and it's going to spread like crazy. But and here's also the thing. When God has called you to do something in this manner, so when he first had me calling out her spiritual father, okay, um, and then he started having me rebuke him on all the ads he was running, because he was running ads like hotcakes, you know, trying to make money off these e-courses e and stuff. And so when the Lord started having me rebuke him on there, right, it doesn't matter if you have a large platform or not. If the Lord has called you to do something, I could go out into I could go to a secret place that, you know, I go and meet with with the Lord at different places. Right. I could go to any one of those places and let his spirit flow through me and I could speak a thing from the realm of the spirit into the natural. And that word is going to go out and do what it's supposed to do, even if nobody on social media ever sees it or hears it. And so what I mean by this is that when the Lord had me originally start doing that towards him specifically, those words didn't just go on a post. Those words went out in the realm of the spirit. And the next thing I know, over like two and three months time, all of his ads got flooded with all of these people just rebuking him, just go, t telling him he was an error, just uh, all of these things, operating in the spirit of simony, selling the prophetic, doing all this stuff, stuff that I didn't even know none of these people. I wasn't friends with any of these people. It happened by the spirit of the Lord. You get what I'm saying? It goes out into the realm of the spirit and because it's the Lord's doing and the Lord's words. It goes out in the realm of the spirit and it searches and it finds all of these specific people that the Lord's already been working on in their life. Right. And that spirit will find them and that spirit will find them. And that spirit will find them. And the next thing you know, when they're online and boom, they see the same thing. They start speaking about it. It's all spiritual first before it's anything natural. Yep, she says she was in it. 
see all of these people talking about leaving the group yep our spiritual fathers who I'm talking about yeah 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 he I, I see you bringing up his name um, yeah Dagon yeah it's a god yeah it's a false god the head of the fish yeah um, the thing about him is you know originally like he put out some stuff but he didn't have he didn't use the platform as momentum really to like grow himself and put himself out there publicly so he didn't really have all of that. And now um, he's reconnecting, like these people are reconnecting with them. And now he's starting to do more like stuff on public platforms, right? To make himself relevant again. So, but you know, the, and, I, and I'm not saying anything specifically about him, but the Lord actually hasn't, um, I know because demons of the same feather are gonna flock together. So when you see all these people connecting and doing ministry together, it's because they, they have like spirits that are not Holy Spirit. Okay, It appears that way in the natural, right? Because all of them have followers and all of them have been doing ministry and stuff, right? But their souls have all been all been turned to, to worship other other things, other desires. So 